Good morning, Saudi Daisy. We have your latest on the Russian-Ukraine situation, crazy gas prices, and also a special interview from Fuller's panel last Wednesday. Now, we also have your latest on sports and weather. All right, let's get inside, Noel. It's, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, maybe this kind gentleman can let us in. Let us. Maybe they can let us. Let's go around. Let's go around. First, Hello, Saudi Daisy. I'm Aaron Jared. And I'm Jack Cinderotti. The Chattanooga Public Library has announced its very first Creators Camp. From April 11th to the 14th, the Downtown Library introduces attendees to professionals in the media industry, from sound engineers to videographers to marketing specialists. In the four-day camp, students will create digital content from vlogs to short films with the latest digital technology. Attendees will also get paid for their work, $200 in total. Eight HCDE students will be selected through an online video submission. Submitted portfolios must showcase your skills and passion as a digital creator and be at least a minute long. For more info, visit the library in person or online at chatlibrary.org. Former State Representative Robin Smith of Hickson pleaded guilty in federal court on Tuesday to one count of honest services wire fraud. In the plea agreement, prosecutors accused Smith of getting kickbacks of taxpayer dollars paid to a company called Phoenix Solutions that offered mail and consulting services to Tennessee lawmakers. The plea agreement says, quote, Smith, Individual 1, and Individual 2 told others, including members of the Tennessee General Assembly and the House Speaker's Office, that Phoenix Solutions was run by an individual named Matthew Phoenix Smith. Individual 1 and Individual 2 claimed that Matthew Phoenix was an experienced political consultant who had worked for a consulting firm, a real company based in Washington, D.C., in truth and fact. Individual 2 ran Phoenix Solutions and Smith. Individual 1 and Individual 2 profited from it. Individual 1 is former Speaker of the House Glenn Casada, and Individual 2 is his former aide Cade Cothern. Robin Smith is now considered a cooperating witness in future investigations, and her sentencing is scheduled for October. The new congressional spending bill, passed on Wednesday, does not include extension of school lunch waivers. The waivers, authorized at the beginning of the pandemic, let schools distribute free meals to all students without verifying their family's income. The waivers also give districts the flexibility to offer grab-and-go meals for kids who are quarantining or studying remotely. The USDA reports about 30 million students now receive free school meals. That's up from about 20 million children who qualified before the pandemic. Some lawmakers are pushing to extend the waivers for another year to give schools and students more time to transition back to pre-pandemic requirements. Vanderbilt University in Nashville announced that on Wednesday they'll no longer require face masks or social distancing indoors. Likewise, the U.S. government continues to drop its mandates for federal workers. In the U.K., Boris Johnson officially ended government COVID restrictions across the board. These announcements come as new CDC guidelines relax COVID restrictions and cases drop across the world. On Wednesday, Biden's new legislation to ban Russian oil imports was overwhelmingly passed in the House of Representatives. In fact, they went even further by encouraging a review of Russian status in the World Trade Organization and encouraging more sanctions on Russian officials. Now the legislation goes to the Senate, where both parties are eager to support Ukraine with a show of true bipartisanship. The Ukraine war has entered into its second week as a Russian attack on a hospital has sparked international outrage. On Wednesday, a Russian airstrike in the city of Mariupol struck a maternity hospital, leaving three dead and 17 injured. This is far from the only attack launched on civilians in Ukraine throughout the war, as Russia's shelling campaign on Ukrainian cities continues. In other news, Congress has passed a bipartisan $13 billion spending bill for humanitarian aid to Ukraine. After the break, we'll take a look at your weather for a rainy. But first, let's take a look at this week's Pet of the Week.
Saudi Daisy. I'm here with your latest in weather. Looks like we're going to have a pretty decent weekend. Temperatures aren't going to cooperate with us, but it looks like it's going to be pretty. Partly cloudy skies Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Those clouds are going to clear out. Now here's Donovan for your latest in sports. After months of speculation, star quarterback Aaron Rodgers has officially announced that he will be returning to the Green Bay Packers. Rumors have been circling whether Rodgers was going to stay, leave, or retire after relationships with the Packers front office deteriorated. The Packers will also franchise tag star wide receiver Devontae Adams as they hope to run it back next year and win it all. Denver Broncos fans had a roller coaster ride this past Tuesday, starting the morning with reports of Aaron Rodgers returning to the Packers. This effectively ended the talks of seeing Aaron Rodgers in a new uniform this well, upcoming season. Been, However, time. around lunch, Denver orchestrated a deal with the Seahawks to send three players and four picks for the 33-year-old quarterback, Russell Wilson. The most valuable piece of this trade for Seattle was getting the number nine pick back. Additionally, they garnered the likes of Drew Locke, Noah Fant, and Shelby Harris. The league announced on Monday that Falcons wide receiver Calvin Ridley will be suspended during the 2022 season for betting on league games. He bet a total of $1,500 and he stated, I don't have a gambling problem. I will be more healthy when I come back. The early seeker return will be February 15, 2023. The boys of the cross team hit a bump in the road with these last two games. In an absolute shootout with Boyd, they came up just short. And against McCauley's A-team, they also suffered a loss. They look to bounce back against Pigeon Forge this Saturday at home. Come out to Hickson to support your boys. Girls Lacrosse is set to play tonight at Ottawa as they search for the first win of the season. Make sure you come out tonight and support your ladies. That's all for sports and now to Bo with your Entertainment Minute. On Wednesday, Star Wars fans were queued once again to say, Hello there. Disney dropped the trailer for their highly anticipated limited series, Obi-Wan Kenobi. The essence of the trailer indicates that this will indeed be a dearly treasured installment. Obi-Wan Kenobi is being reprised by Ewan McGregor, the beloved actor that many fans grew up with watching as a protagonist in the Star Wars prequels. But McGregor is not the only actor making a return. Hayden Christensen is back from a 17-year absence. He's cloaked in black once more to play one of the most iconic figures in pop culture history, Darth Vader. The first episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi arrives on Disney Plus on May 25th. The director of Black Panther was detained by Atlanta police after being mistaken for a bank robber. According to reports, Ryan Coogler was attempting to withdraw $12,000 from his bank account. He had written a note on the back of the withdrawal slip asking for the cash to be counted discreetly due to the amount. The teller notified her supervisor that she thought Coogler was trying to rob the bank and 911 was called. Coogler was placed in handcuffs while police investigated and was released once his identity was confirmed. While Coogler says the situation should have never happened, he adds that it's been, quote, addressed to my satisfaction. Bank of America issued a statement apologizing for the incident. Coogler was in Atlanta working on Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, a sequel to his 2018 hit at the time. The film is expected to be released later this year. That's all for your Entertainment Minute. Let's check in with Dylan. Just as an update, we are still locked outside the school. Um, it's getting a little chilly, so good thing I brought my sweater. <laughs> but we also have an update on the new Apple products. In their first launch event of the year, Apple has held a new iPhone, iPad, and more. Highlights from the launch on Tuesday, including a new budget, iPhone SE, an updated iPad Air, and a more powerful Mac chip. The M1 Ultra Mac chip will be used in the new Mac Studio a desktop computer without a display. The price for the Mac Studio will start at $4,000. It's kind of pricey. Apple's M1 chip will also be used as an updated iPad Air. The new iPad features 5G connectivity and a revamped camera. It will retail for $600 and hit stores March 18th. And just in time for St. Patrick's Day, Apple announced you can get an iPhone 13 in a new color green starting on Friday. I'm Dylan Redden from SD News, now back to the studio. That's all for your news today, Sonny Daisy. Have a fun and safe weekend.